Hello. How nice to see you. How you doing? Fair enough, I hope. Okay, start with weird things that are happening. I've done some Zumba. I wasn't even sure what that was. Uh, my wife is making me exercise. I never exercise. I don't know why I have to do it now. I mean, I might be ill. Uh, the upshot is that I can now do something called the Merengue March. Uh, I, I don't know the origin of that word. Merengue, meringue and gay. I'm a lesbian marching with baked egg white. It's a combination uh, of all my skill sets. So honestly, happy to get back to my books. Right, March the 24th. What the hell happened on this same day years ago? Well, it doesn't seem all that earth shattering now, but it was on this day in 1603 that Elizabeth I died. She had been queen for so long that I think everybody got overexcited at the thought of something new. So Elizabeth, no kids. Uh, nobody wanted anybody foreign to take over, so that would have been me out. Uh, in the end, James VI of Scotland was made king and renamed James I of England and Ireland. Same guy, slightly different way of calling him. Uh, like changing your password to something so similar to the last one that, in fact, you forget them both. So not that interested in him, but I quite like his wife, Anne of Denmark. So here is more confusion. Uh, a lot of people are going to think, oh, I know her. Wasn't she Olivia Colman? Right, so there is a movie about a queen called Anne where she was played by Olivia Colman and she was also something to do with Denmark, but totally different people. Add that to a King James with two different numbers and you find that history can be confusing. Queen Anne, from the movie, lived at the turn of the 18th century, dying in 1714. She was married to George, Prince of Denmark. She was not Danish herself. Anne of Denmark, on the other hand, actually came from Denmark and she lived about a hundred years earlier. I realise that I have the oddest collection of books in the world because I discovered that I have an entire volume about her. Uh, not all that good looking. Uh, I know royals get a disproportionate amount of attention in history, but she is actually important if you are a theatrical like myself. Uh, so she was on the throne 1603 to 1619, it's the Jacobean age, and at the time women, on the whole, not allowed on the stage. Uh, Margaret Hughes. Margaret Hughes is often credited as the first professional actress on the English stage, but she didn't take to the boards till 1660. But Anne of Denmark loved to perform and was putting on plays of her own in the court 60 years earlier. She dressed up and took part. It's a big deal for women. Her patronage of the arts was hugely important, although I have to tell you it is not my favourite thing about her life. So, she and her husband James used to quarrel a lot. A lot of it was childish. Uh, one time, in a bid to get her own way, she took to her bed for two days and wouldn't eat. So you know what James did? He hired a famous French acrobat to go into her bedroom and lure her out. And apparently it worked. Now, I cannot find the name of this acrobat or work out how the king might have got hold of him. I also can't decide uh, if that would have done it for me. Imagine you're lying there in a grump and in comes a man you don't know doing forward rolls. I mean, I think if he'd sent in spring rolls, I might have been more inclined to shift myself. So here's the thing, I've never been sporty. Can't see the point of it. Somebody always wins, somebody loses, people wear unsuitable clothing and everyone's armpits honk. I mean, why bother when you could be reading? But because I read, I do know that today in 1921, the very first international women's sports event, the Women's Olympiad, began in Monte Carlo. A marvellous French woman called Alice Milliat set it up because she was so angry that women were not going to be fully included in the next official Olympics. Uh, up until then, women had only been allowed to, you know, pop in for a tiny bit of archery or croquet. Uh, my favourite quote about this uh, came from Pierre de Corbitin, founder of the modern Olympics, who said that the inclusion of women would be impractical, uninteresting, unesthetic and incorrect. Anyway, in the early 20th century, there was a general belief that both muscular and brain labour must be reduced at the onset of menstruation. I know, but, you know, once a month in the past, it used to be all I could think about. Anyway, Alice Milliet's alternative event had the right effect. It pushed the boys along and she did finally get her way with women gradually being allowed to hop, skip and jump more in public. Although to this day, the Olympics does not offer an equal slate of men's and women's sports. I do have a favorite athlete. My favorite ever athlete was an American swimmer called Eleanor G. Holm. So she was due to be in the 1936 Olympics, but she got chucked out for what these days I suppose is called doping. Except that 
her drug use was spectacular. Now, obviously, obviously, drug taking is bad, but you have to admire that her drug of choice was champagne. Uh, she was apparently on her way to the Olympics uh, on board an ocean liner called the SS Manhattan, and she popped into a cocktail party. Uh, there are those who say that afterwards the team doctor found her in a state approaching a coma. Uh, years later, she defended herself. This chaperone came up to me and told me it was time to go to bed. God, it was about nine o'clock, and who wanted to go down in that basement to sleep anyway? So I said to her, oh, is it really bedtime? Did you make the Olympic team, or did I? I had had a few glasses of champagne. So she went and complained that I was setting a bad example for the team, and they got together and told me the next morning that I was fired. I was heartbroken. I wouldn't worry too much about Eleanor. Uh, she went on to become quite the celebrity socialite and interior designer, even appearing in a couple of movies. She also married well and lived to be 90, still enjoying a drink. Uh, I don't know if Eleanor Holm knew about the great American writer Dorothy Parker. They're the right generation to have known about each other. Uh, I, I have a collection of her stuff here. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm sure the banished swimmer would have loved one of my favourite Parker poems, which I have remembered for many years. I like to have a martini, two at the very most. After three, I'm under the table. After four, I'm under my host. I love that. Uh, I have to go dance now. Uh, don't think about it. It's not pretty. Take care. Be kind. Be kind.